I am back here at Adam's Speed Shop, and of course that means more modifications for Project Overland Bison. But today, before we get into the new things we're going to do, I wanted to spend some time going over what it's like to be an owner of a 2021 Chevy Colorado ZR2. Specifically, what my things I've experienced have been as a vehicle owner, the challenges and concerns that some of the community has expressed, but also what I've done with modifications and exactly what I feel was beneficial, and maybe some of those things that I might regret and maybe not do again. So. Stay tuned today, a full walkthrough and an evaluation of where I am and where the project's going. Today marks an important day inside of Project Overland Bison. This is my evaluation day where I look at everything I've done in the first part of my build and start to assess whether my expectations were met or what I have to do to change uh, to get the end desired result. I kind of have two phases of development that I've uh, built out for this project. The first of which in phase one is sort of a uh, complementary phase to what GM had designed the ZR2 for. Uh, these are bolt-on products that the aftermarket has offered that allow me to get the off-road capabilities to the maximum within the context that the truck was sort of designed for. Uh, now as I'm moving into phase two, I'm going to look at, you know, power adders, of course, things to get more horsepower, things to get more performance beyond what the factory components were designed for. So today I'm going to go back and step through each of those modifications, starting from the suspension, working through even the most small details of just how I've accented the interior and made it the space more available and give you some feedback as to what the project was trying to do, what I wanted to get from it, and did it actually perform the way I had thought. So. We're going to start by walking around the truck and I'll show you the part and kind of give you some commentary on my feelings on the modification and how well it's performed. So let's get started. And first I'm going to start off with those modifications that I've made that have either lived up to expectation or exceeded that. And then I'll kind of wrap up with the ones that I feel have been either subpar or really just couldn't deliver on the promises that they made. So far, I'm pretty happy with the overall aesthetic of the vehicle as it's coming together with all the modifications I've made. Uh, that portion, um, I can say I really don't have much of an issue with. GM did a great job with the addition of the sand dune metallic and the new refacia uh, upgrade in the front did give it some more modern lines. We'll talk about the lights. Uh, that's something I definitely want to hit on at the end of this. But starting off with the off-road performance and what I've done to bring this up to what I think is really the maximum potential with a couple of bolt-ons, GM did most of the homework here. The ZR2 uh, comes with a much beefier knuckle. Uh, you have the upper control arm, the lower control arm. All of these are iron cast products. These are not your stamp steel, so definitely heavier duty. Uh, the biggest addition, of course, is the DSSV shock, and that part, as you can see, has remained. And I can't really complain. Uh, for everything that I've done so far with the vehicle, uh, they've sufficed. I know there's been some issues with regards to leaking and a few things, and I've actually suffered from that in the rear. Uh, but up front here, just about everything's working as specified. The only changes I've made, as you can see, are with the spring. I am running an Eibach Pro Lift Kit. That is a one inch leveling for the Bison and one and a quarter inch for a ZR2. Um, I am running the Peak Suspension uh, tie rod stiffener uh, sleeves and I am running the Peak Suspension diff drop. Now I know there's a lot of controversy over the, the sleeves and what the, what the benefit might be from it, but all I can tell you is if you take a look here and you can see how the front cam has moved, been pushed, Recently out on a trip, I had been uh, running around in the sand following a bunch of raptors and uh, in one of the areas there was a rock that was underneath and I was traveling about 40 or 45 miles per hour, I had a direct hit, almost full lock um, and I pushed the steering uh, about 15 degrees off clock and that's what I first noticed and that's when I realized I had hit so hard it had actually realigned the vehicle. So. Um, you know, in my practical experience, I can't say that I have too much of an issue. Uh, there's probably still a lot of debate about how strong you want to make your tie rod and where you want to make the give point. But so far, no issues, so no problems in my book. Apart from that, there's really not a lot I've done on the suspension. Um, and really the biggest other change to the off-road capabilities have been in the tires. And the Milestar Patagonia XTs are something that I think were probably the single largest component to making my ability to get off-road in places I wanted to go uh, capable. The 33-inch tire is something that is probably the largest tire you can put without doing a substantial suspension upgrade. And the zero offset I like for a little bit wider track base, uh, but it does complicate the turning radius. And if you guys remember, I did put in an AEV 33-inch trim kit 
and I do believe that's pretty much a necessity if you're going to go about doing any kind of a 33 inch tire you're going to have to do either some trimming on your own or getting the kit to put it together so whether you have the Bison or the standard ZR2 uh, the kit does work for both just so you know I haven't installed the trim kit in the rear and as you can see it does still hit uh, all those scratch marks are from stuff in the tire and if you've seen some of the content I put out there You'll see I do quite a bit of articulation in the rear, and I stuffed that tire quite a few times. So, uh, suspension-wise, the vehicle pretty well uh, equipped from factory. Tire-wise, 33s are kind of a must. And, of course, if you're talking about what you can do with the 33s, there are some things you have to keep in mind. Uh, a 33-inch tire barely fits under here. And, uh, as you can see, I've removed mine, and I've done so by installing the Ultra Swing. I've got a complete video out there about my impressions of how this has worked but so far it's a great addition not only aesthetically but functionality wise it's lived through just about everything I've tossed at it and it has given me the ability to put another four and a half gallons of fuel which anybody who's driven a Colorado long distances knows the extra gas is probably appreciated uh, that can get us out of a bind on some of the longer trails that you hit so uh, the ability to keep extra fuel store the tire and really not change the performance of the vehicle uh, is one of those great additions and don't forget it's a full-size spare so that's a big positive as far as in the back uh, again really the only addition uh, I've done to the suspension here has been just making room and giving more uh, protection I am running some of the Dayton Fab uh, lower lower shock guards here, and as you can see, uh, that's just about all I've done. All the rest of the skid plating underneath here is all the original AEV stuff. Uh, you will see that I am running a GM Performance Parts steel drive shaft, and as you can see by the skid guards, I do use them quite a bit. Uh, you'll see at the very front, uh, I am running the transmission uh, addition to the skid plate. That is another improvement made up front that is from AEV, but. I don't know if you can see here uh there is that uh long uh, behold <coughs> excuse me problem uh with the dssv shock uh there's our little wiper seal for the gen 2s and it's not supposed to be uh outside the shock so uh, again i that's really the only issue i can say with the dssv is you will have some issues with the leakage and or that wiper popping out. In my case, I think I have actually um, exceeded the capabilities of the shock in the rear, hence the addition. If you've watched my preview in the beginning, you'll see the King Shots waiting on the counter. That will be my next upgrade. <laughs> Exhaust, well, that's a given. You know where I work. Uh, this is one of the prototype systems for the Magnaflow Overland series and we just are releasing that product here this next week and this has gone through a tremendous amount of testing. Uh, we've basically been able to isolate not only a, a exit pattern that doesn't sit any lower than any of the protective gear so you have a nice clean exit out the back but we've also tucked the muffler nice and high up out of the way and as you can see with the little u-pipe there we've put our no drone technology resonator so you can get all that performance increase in power and don't have that negative attribute of a deep drony uh, cabin noise it's a nice warm performance note that's there when you want it and then of course when you get off the throttle it goes back to a very comfortable cruising sound so uh, that would probably be the only other performance modification I've made uh, minus the S and B filter uh, and the rest of everything I've done here has really been for this and that's the uh, camp experience and really the ARE topper that's been the one big transformation as far as the aesthetic of the truck in bringing it to more of an overland than your standard off-road pickup. I would definitely say that the ARE topper is one of the finishing touches that I absolutely had to have for my build as the design parameters for what I wanted to do in a camp area would not accommodate something that's a rooftop tent. As much as rooftop tents are kind of the trend today, uh, I, I like the extra warmth that I get from the solid uh, fiberglass canister as well as all the insulation that it provides and really when you get out in the desert or you're camping in places where you have a lot of wind uh, that just can keep you up all night and that's one thing sleeping in here hasn't been a problem I do fit and that's the other positive if I was six foot five I'd probably have some issues but this is not a problem so far and I will be building out that as we get into phase two the airy rooftop basket is nice and as you can see it does provide provisions uh, for the lights that I like these are the Baja Design S1s for my camp area and since we're on lights let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what I have on here uh, I am running ditch lights as well. Those are the Squadron Sports, and I am running the XLRs. 
Uh, these are the XLR Sports as well for my fogs up front. Still waiting on putting on the uh, S8 I have for the front bar. That will probably happen over the next week. But for the most part, that wraps up most of the external modifications I've made to the vehicle. Now inside, that's the last part is the kind of creature comforts. And I've always had a lot of uh, personal debate on whether or not I wanted to do something that was gonna be very intrusive to the center console stack area. I like the cleanliness of a simple pro fit and my mount for my tablet or my phone, depending on what I'm using for my Gaia GPS. Uh, I might be looking at something up top here to maybe relocate some of that stuff a little closer to me, but I'm still figuring it out. For the most part though, um, I do run 511 stuff here. Uh, I love their haul packs, as you can see in the back. Talk a little about those in a minute, but first and foremost, I do like having my gear accessible. So whether we're talking, you know, spare radio, gloves, things I need here, uh, <laughs> spare parts from, you know, some of my power tool goodies to uh, my gun case uh, and a bunch of other little fun stuff I keep in this front pocket. This keeps it readily available uh, and anything I need where I can get to it while I'm driving and not have to worry about digging in a bag or finding it somewhere in the center console so the good part about this is it's not going to take the place of your passenger seat it's only there when you want it there are two clips that you can find you can then put those on the bottom and just as quickly as someone can come in all you've got to do is push it around and now you have your passenger seat back so it's not very intrusive it's super easy to flip around based upon whether you have a passenger or somebody riding or having it accessible when you want uh, as you can see S-Pod is still sitting here. I just got through some of the wiring last night. Uh, so I am finishing that up and I'm finding a home for that. I'm not exactly sure where I wanna go. And that's one of those reasons why I'm reconsidering how I'm gonna work on the center stack. But for the most part, organization is really the only other part that's uh, really big for me. I did put in a, a home link for my garage door. Uh, this is kind of a custom mount. I tore apart the center. And as you know, if you've got a ZR2, you're supposed to have a wireless phone charger. Guess what? This phone doesn't fit. Guess what? Any phone that's pretty much newer in the last five years will not fit. But what I did do is relocate it into that front pocket. So uh, for now, I've got a relocated um, wireless charger and I gained a pocket back, which actually I use a lot more than the phone charger. I am using a uh, organizer. I think I picked this thing up on, um, I think it was Amazon. Uh, works good, uh, holds my gear, keeps my worn goodies for the wireless winch adapter. And of course, just some necessities in there. And amazingly, it doesn't rattle like crazy. So that's a huge bonus as well. When it comes to organization, and I was talking about like those haul packs, I'm gonna step around to the back. There are a few things I like about the new haul pack design that uh, 511 released just last year. The haul packs are a set of uh, gear that come in different sizes, and you'll see here. These are great because they have a nice sturdy base, so if you're out camping, you're putting stuff in the dirt, you know, you got something that's protective on the bottom. But they're also a perfect height that seem to wrap just around the rear headrest, which keeps them from moving around while I'm uh, out and about in the field and running around. And as you can see, you can also run the 511 hex grid on the back. On my driver's seat, I do run that as well. Uh, first aid kit and a bunch of goodies too. Uh, but for the most part, these haul packs are great sizes. They have handles and they also are a backpack. So it makes them quick to unload and they work well in the back of the truck as well. I run about six of those and based upon the different uh, configurations I'll run, whether I'm out camping for the week or just doing an overnighter, all of those things are there. Uh, the insulation on the inside, the bed rug bed liners, and we can't call them bed rugs and carpet kits anymore because they're not made of carpet. Uh, they basically have a nice uh, polycarbonate uh, padding material on the bottom, which is what I do sleep on, and the overall insulation of the inside. So this is uh, my kind of stay area when I'm camping, and I pretty much uh, unload everything here, put it in the roof basket or underneath the vehicle, depending upon the conditions, and uh, then I sleep in here. So for now, that's what I'm doing until I build out that complete camp area. So as you can see, there's some extra parts in here I'm working on for some projects. Uh, but for the most part, that is what's going on with this truck. I promised you some of the evaluations for things that were regretful. And as much as I've really tried to like these, uh, they just don't work out. And I think that's a consensus you'll find with most of the community, the lights. I love them, they look great. When the DRLs are running, 
they give the front end the appropriate look that I think a 2020 vehicle needs. The factory incandescents just aren't up to par, uh, but really uh, the black housings are another benefit. It just, they don't work up to specs. These are the Illumin series. Uh, and I bought these on, I think it was Facebook Marketplace and only for about a hundred and a half. Um, and even at a hundred and a half, I have to say, it's a regretful buy. Uh, you can't get them to aim correctly, especially the front's been leveled. Uh, if you had the rake of a stock Colorado, a two wheel drive, you can get them to actually align to where they're supposed to, but really I'm aiming straight above, uh, straight above the car's uh, rear view mirror in front of me. It's just not a reasonable uh, consideration. And worst case, the lighting, even though they do provide an H7 bulb, is insufficient. Uh, it really isn't an improvement over stock. So this is 100% an aesthetic thing. And really, if I didn't have the Baja Design lights to make up for uh, some of the forward lighting, I probably wouldn't be able to see at night. So definitely have to say that that was one of those regretful buys. So that's my phase one build. And overall, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with how everything's come together. The Colorado community and the Canyon community haven't been endowed with a whole lot of aftermarket support, but I think a lot of that comes from the fact that the ZR2 is a very capable truck. So that being considered, and of course, what we do have for product tends to be pretty good, uh, I can't really complain. Uh, for the most part, the aftermarket has been pretty supportive considering the quantities. We're definitely not a Ford Raptor community that has that level of support. We're definitely not the Toyota Tacoma uh, community that has that level of support. But considering what we have, uh, we actually have quite a bit of options still available. Just dive into uh, the forums and talk to the other people out there to kind of see what works best for you. Uh, but that puts us at the next spot where I am working with my phase two build. and. Uh, I did mention in there are some of those uh, things that I'm going to be doing to improve upon what's already been done. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I am definitely working with improving the suspension. As you can see behind me, uh, the King Shocks are a necessary component. Uh, I'm pretty sure the DSSVs in the back are toast. Uh, you can feel it, and of course the um, leakage is definitely apparent, and you can see even the wipers have popped out. So that's something that I will have to do but these are not your run-of-the-mill spec parts. I am running uh, a Deaver spring that will be on order here and arriving shortly, and I'm running a little bit more lift. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the spacer, and I want a little bit more droop. So the overall spring design is gonna be complementary to the shocks that I have, so I'm gonna have to hold off and put those in together. Uh, up front, I am gonna be running the um, King setup as well, uh, and we'll be doing the adjustables, and I'll go into detail on that build portion when that comes up. Uh, ultimately, though, the whole reason for it is I do want to build some more power into uh, this particular platform. It's a pretty capable truck, don't get me wrong. You can do about 80% of the things you want to do, uh, I think, for the majority of what is going to be the Colorado consumer. Um, I come from the background of performance. I need something that I can spin the tires when I want. I like to drive with my foot more than I do with my hands. So that tends to put me in a place where the Colorado, whether it's the tuning calibration and the inability to tune the transmission uh, from any of the aftermarket support, uh, I need to put some more power to the wheels. So I have opted to go and work with uh, Mallet Superchargers and we will be putting in a stage one and stage two and comparing some of the results and going through the details of that but that's the second portion of what I wanna do. So because I'm putting the extra power in there, I'm gonna need the suspension to support that. So uh, that coupled to the fact that I am putting in a lot of camp gear, uh, the extra weight in the back is going to be hard for the DSSVs to manage as you see, and they've already blown out. So those things are kind of working in conjunction with one another. And then ultimately the last phase of what I have to do here is going to be for better ground clearance uh, and that is going to be the 35 inch tire upgrade. So working with uh, AEV, I am going to do the high mark flares. Uh, I am going to go to a beadlock tire so I can get those pressures down. And I'm going to be working with Milestar on a new 35 inch tire. Uh, it will be one of the compounds that is already available, but a size that's going to be unique. Uh, it'll be kind of this skinny 35 that allow us a good scrub angle and good articulation so that we can get the maximum utility of all that suspension. So that's kind of where I'm going for phase two and definitely going to be updating everyone and showing the installations as well as uh, providing my feedback on it. But stay tuned to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. And of course, if you have any questions, list them below and I'll try to get them answered. Thanks again.